go. And we are live. So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, obviously, whenever and wherever you're watching this. And obviously, we've got a special live today uh, with specialist or diabetic specialist Chris Feakin. So obviously, I know Chris from... Uh, working alongside him uh, with our coach, so I wanted to bring Chris on, especially for the type two diabetics that are watching, um, especially because your demographic is obviously a U.S. women. Uh, I don't want to look at the proportion of how many there are they from the U.S. So, what I wanted to ask you, Chris, what was what's your background, and then how did you kind of I'm not going to say stumble upon the demographic that you work upon or the niche. Uh, so some people got a little bit of quick uh, a background to yourself. Yeah, so um, I started, you know, like most people who, who go online, you know, I started as a, as a personal trainer in a gym, you know, seven, seven years ago, perhaps, um, you know, helping anyone and everyone who wanted to, you know, strive to get healthier, whether that be lose weight, whether that be, you know, anything whatsoever, uh, which I enjoyed. I did thoroughly enjoy it. But there was something missing in it. Okay. There was like, you know, that life changing, pivotal coaching experience. You know, lots of the people did, but many of these people just wanted to come to lose, you know, seven or eight pounds to look better on the beach, which I found it difficult to get kind of enthusiastic about you know so uh, my uncle was diagnosed with type 2 after I'd been PT for about a year and a half maybe two um, at this point I hadn't really helped anyone with with type 2 um, he was only newly diagnosed um, he came to me I helped him lose you know 25 30 pounds um, you know he was struggling as with most you know newly diagnosed people with type 2 um, you know, the medications really weren't sitting well, you know, the metformin, um, lots of things, you know, struggling with accepting, you know, this, this diagnosis, um, you know, really struggling with that energy, you know, confidence. So to help him, you know, lose you know, this profound 30 pounds and ditch these meds and ditch, you know, type 2 diabetes as an active diagnosis was, you know, so fulfilling for me. And that made me feel better. Obviously, I know I had an, an emotional attachment to his, my uncle, but, you know, I'd never felt that way in any transformation before. Um, and from that point onwards, you know, I started to kind of, well, I fell in love with it at that point. At that point onwards, you know, I started helping people locally who were type two. Um, and eventually, I guess I kind of just, my eyes were opened to helping people anywhere they were in the world, which is exactly what I do now. Uh, predominantly right now, you know, ladies that are in, in the US. Um, but yeah, I've been doing predominantly just that for it's gotta be close to close to four years just online. Yeah. So what was what was your allure to to work with Louis no bite and stuff? So people, uh, well, he's not doing it now, but so people know why I'm shouting it. I'm shouting at my dog, so. <laughs> uh, uh, no barking. <laughs> <laughs> Just the featuring, featuring the doggo. Yeah. So, so obviously, the, the, I can remember my question now. Uh, I might have to let him out in a sec because he's getting a bit, a bit. Getting a bit aggy. A bit, a bit anxious. <laughs> Louis, no. <laughs> Just calm down. <laughs> Get him on the show. <laughs> he doesn't like the, he doesn't like the computer anymore. He used to love it. Um, so my question is, what 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 was your fascination to? Because you you mentioned your uncle, be it obviously mm -hmm. people watching would know he's a man. What yeah. what what was more the 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 passion or the buzz about obviously helping women? So through my whole coaching career, I always enjoyed coaching women more than men. Um, to be honest with you, I can't really tell you why. I've always enjoyed it more, and because of that, I've always found getting results for women, you know, a little bit easier, a little bit better. Um, 
that's that's really it to be honest with you you know like i said throughout my whole pt career you know if i could have chosen either men or women to only work with if i could only ever choose one it would have always been women and this doesn't mean that i'm only ever going to work with women you know with type 2 absolutely not you know i've full intention you know in the coming years to to help to help men too it's just the focus right now so more of an expand expansion yeah yeah and i yeah exactly yeah so i'm gonna make it awkward for you now um to make it relevant to the group uh obviously you were pulled up and this is a couple months ago now say you remember the november mastermind Mm -hmm. of you being called out of why did you find it awkward to talk about people losing the limbs as the, the diabetes mm. so explain to my community why you you as oh, i know you as able-bodied but why mm. you found it a, a challenge to to speak to your community and your audience of ladies as this is could be the outcome if we don't get our shit together yeah so i think this comes from me yeah, this is this is something which I've grown into into being far more comfortable with now, which is fantastic. But I used to get caught in the trap of never really truly wanting to make anyone else feel uncomfortable. Uh, never wanted to hurt intentionally make anyone feel uncomfortable. Uh, that was probably the biggest crux because you know I'm very sensitive of that coming towards me. You know, unless it's got obviously the benefit, you know, of, of, of growth on my end. Um, I think I think that's where it came from. Um, I had the same problem, not just, you know, with, with amputees, but almost like across across the board too. I mean, you know, really struggling to ask, you know, the uncomfortable questions that made these the, the whoever it was I was talking to kind of open up about these difficult things, which would then make them feel you know, uncomfortable in for whatever that may be. So I think that's kind of where the epicenter of where that was that came from. Well, I think I, I even said to you, if you didn't obviously get that in in in, in place, and I, and I joked about it, but I was being serious as well as obviously they're going to go from being type two diabetic to go in my community, and that is the least of their worries is they've lost a, a, a limb, arm, leg. Uh, I'm not. I'm, I'm. That wouldn't be. And okay, the, the audience watching this can can relate to this. That's not something that we're afraid to be able to ask him. It's probably a conversational starter. As in, uh, I think from a disabled community as a whole, it's almost like um, a pride aspect of how can I up up. What's the word I'm looking for? How can I? outdo the other individual of how I acquired my my disability so for, for, for us as a, I think as a community it, it's very I'm going to generalize a little bit some people may feel uncomfortable a little bit insecure still about it but for the majority they're very open about it's it's nothing to be ashamed of nothing to be to hide about so it's almost a, a PC question as okay I have a, a, a lower limb deficiency i've got an above knee amputation and it's almost like a rite of passage so it's great to hear that obviously you've made that evolution as an individual uh and you're willing to to obviously ask these difficult what and, and why we're obviously sharing this t- today is obviously we've got to be able to ask the difficult questions to be able to make the greater impact for the individual because if you're willing to be to be open obviously you make more progress and and the greater the awareness of the problem the greater yeah. the, the of, of solving the, the the problem yeah of course of course yeah. yeah i agree wholeheartedly definitely so yeah the dog wanted to join the live today so he's he's, at, he's been out the let out of the room now so <laughs> i didn't have to get up so i appreciate that for for, for family doing that um but that's probably a good one <laughs> for people want to see uh, that aspect of uh, how would I describe this evolving to things going wrong. You probably could go go listen to some of my podcasts uh, of 2020, 2021. You might hear a dog barking in the background because <laughs> he was adjusting to obviously 
uh, a new a new uh, environment of being a racing ground to living in a house that obviously it's very very strange and everything's brand new and uh he still doesn't like doors being closed yeah. he doesn't like it it's, even though he knows people are gonna, gonna let him out yeah. so f- chris i want to obviously give you the floor a little mm-hmm. bit more now i love debating how we could do this or showcase it's very difficult with tech because obviously I've, i'm i'm the admin and and, and okay. you're the guest so talk to to my audience what what is it that your specialty in terms mm-hmm. of coaching how does it differentiate from everything that else is out there that they potentially could put, potentially go down yeah okay so with with you guys that have been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes you know throughout you know from the day of being diagnosed onwards you know, you're being told that you can't eat this, you can only eat that. You, know, you can't eat these foods, stay away from that, stay away from the pizza, pasta, rice. You can't eat that. You know, it gets demonized. It's terrible, bad, you can't eat that. When in reality, you can. Yeah, you know, there's no weight loss for someone who's been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes is no different to weight loss for anyone else. Anyone else. Okay, now obviously you can't eat pasta, pizza, donuts, you know, all in one day. Of course not, because that's not that's not balance. It's not moderation. And obviously, whether you've been diagnosed with type 2 or not, that's not going to be productive to, to weight loss. It's not going to elicit fat loss anyway. So as we know, cal- calories calories in, calories out. Of course, you know, if you want to regain control of your blood sugars, you need to regain control of your carbs. But there is never actually, with my approach, there is never any food that is completely off limits. Food that you just strictly can't can't eat. So that's one of the big things, and that's something which many of the ladies that first start, or first maybe not start coaching with me, but first you know first meet me, something which can be quite hard to get their head around because the doctors saying no, the endocrinologist is saying no, the nutritionist that we're sent to is saying no, ketos telling them no, paleo is telling them no, everything. He's saying they can't eat this thing, these things. You know, they open up YouTube, they watch a doctor on YouTube, and he's telling, giving them all this, unfortunately, you know, likely, you know, bogus information there, adverts. So it's just getting drilled into them that they can't eat these things. So that's one of the one of the biggest things, first of all. And second of all, not something that people often overlook is the fact that weight gain and type 2 diabetes is a symptom of you. Yeah, your lifestyle, habits, and beliefs. You know, if your sleep is rubbish, that's going to have an impact on the decisions that you make in terms of food, your appetite, your energy. That's going to spill over into everything. Okay, if your level of preparation is non-existent, so you're reaching for takeout, you're reaching for convenient foods, you go into the cafeteria at work. Those things are okay, but if it's happening every single day, of course, that's not going to be productive for for weight loss. If you've got a negative relationship with food. If you if you manage stress and emotion by reaching for food, then all of these things are going to come back to affecting the choices that you make and affecting what you put in your mouth. You know, these are the reasons behind the weight gain and type two diabetes. These are the things that affect what you put in your mouth. So if you just focus on nutrition and diet without the root cause, you're only going to find yourself back to where you started anyway. I'm surprised you haven't slayed Slimming World or Weight Watchers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Weight yeah. right, 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 Watchers. See, Slimming World here in the UK is a big one. Um, Weight Watchers. Slimming World doesn't, I haven't really heard much of Slimming World in America. So that's not something that we often talk about with my ladies. But Weight Watchers is, is big in America still. Yeah, well, I think for, for my audience, it's, well, because it's more multi not national. Obviously, Weight Watchers or WW, uh, Slimming World, uh, down the lines of keto, yeah, diets that they've tried in the past. And it's almost not re educating, but giving um, a sense of I don't use the word diet or mm-hmm. I don't like to, or, or, or I, if you look at most of my content, it, it would go more directly to the definition of the dictionary which is a balanced diet 
So yeah. I probably bang home more the the drum of nutrition, nutrition, nutrition but that's my background yeah. from sport yeah. Yeah. Uh, of of giving people this is nutrition of obviously the the ones that are predominantly working with me right now i've got a sporting background so them it's more looking at a balanced approach but they want to move away from it's almost like a carbon copy of myself of more a case of it for being for performance basis is of it doesn't care what it looks like etc obviously i care what my food looks like yeah, nowadays yeah. Uh, if it yeah. looks nice and it tastes good uh and and it and it brings home results as well it's even better uh, and obviously you and i both will have these conversations in terms of and i was having one just today and she wanted to know when the live is so, so um kathy if you're watching obviously i'll give you uh, kudos for that um of she wants to have a better understanding of a nutrition when it comes to she doesn't want to go down the results of like calorie counting like excessively low uh and being able to be more enjoying so both of our communities will relate to this of, of enjoying their food they're not feeling a burden if they're going to go out uh they don't feel that they're going to be one of those people that are oh, such and such is just having salad and water they're not really getting involved so there's all the social pressures that come with it so it, it, yeah. it's almost like re-educating the individual you can go out and yeah. go out with your family go out with your friends uh you can go down the route uh, down the route of uh preparing for that eventuality that doesn't always happen but being if you were to say okay you and i are talking on wednesday if we were going to go out friday we could prepare as oh yeah. we're going to eat at such and such a restaurant i need to have obviously prepared before this is a bit more complex yeah. than pr the macros yeah. now uh, and yeah. calorie counting but i could be able to oh i could look at it ahead of time of what am i likely to to want to eat at that restaurant how many calories that going to take up yeah. when i put it this is obviously more complex and it, this is overkill but uh, you, you and I, obviously, we can do this and we don't really worry about it. It's like, I'm going to go to uh, go with my friends and go with my family and meet a nice meal. I'm going to enjoy the occasion. I'm not going to worry about too much about the, the grand scheme of uh, what's in me. I'm not going to, obviously, you and I wouldn't pig out completely, but we've got a great understanding to kind of go, okay, the, the social occasion is more important about obsessing about the, the nutrition or the diet component of uh of, of sticking to absolutely say 1400 calories because that's probably about the bang average for most people uh, yeah. if they want to lose a weight uh, lose weight you're not obsessing about it you can actually yeah. enjoy uh, the journey you can enjoy yeah. the that occasion of it could be i don't know a birthday um you've obviously come back from uh um, uh, our coach's wedding, so that that occasion of <laughs> yeah. probably going to be ex excessive yeah. drinking. Uh, it sounds like it, by the I didn't go, so so I'm just uh, pat assuming uh, yeah. of people that have enjoyed themselves. And obviously, we 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 can talk of the game. Um, but there, there will be times that coaches probably do things they ought to not do from an example perspective. Yeah. Uh, I I'll use. Uh, Christmas last year as an example I had a chat with uh, another amputee and I was in the, eating a mince pie on the call and you know what you know what's going to come out of my mouth next Chris don't you you shouldn't be eating that it's like I had one mince pie so for yeah. the Americans obviously it's um, uh, how would we describe a mince pie it's mince meat in a pastry and obviously mm -hmm. it's very traditional to have at Christmas in the UK I had one. I could understand the person say to me if I eat an entire box yeah, in front of, of them, uh, which obviously I would say to somebody, if you you were doing it, I would pull it up. If somebody else was doing it, okay, what what is what is the rationale? I should really use that scientific word. What 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 is the behavior and habit behind eating the entire box? Yeah, because yeah. obviously the, cool. there's an issue there of. Uh, under the surface is what are you trying to mask yeah. whereas one i think i think we've brought it on ourselves as an industry of no 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 
you do as you do as what I say, not as I do, and then obviously we get <laughs> that kind of thing thrown in our face. Uh, I joke about that, but obviously it's it's it, it, it's not it's not a big it's not a big deal because what is one the calorie yeah. count of it would be yeah. probably quite calorific because it's Christmas, yeah. it's the same as Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah. It's almost like a double whammy for the Americans. It's like big celebration on one day to have another one, um, but if you're able to obviously offset it to a certain extent mm -hmm. of kind of going, you know that they happen like clockwork, you could do some of the hard work the other 10 months of the year, as in not necessarily go into this mindset that obviously you and I are going to plan for come January. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're starting mm -hmm. back again. Okay. We can, t as, as an industry, we time it like clockwork. We know people are going to have news resolutions. We know they're going to have goals and we know come March, the majority of those people are going to fail. We know that's going to happen. But I think uh, the more ethical coaches, mm -hmm. the ones who got morals and ethics, obviously don't want this to happen because mm -hmm. it's almost like a negative cycle. We want to break. Okay, something, yeah. some companies might not have those morals. The 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 they they're more worried about the money if they yeah. want you to they wouldn't tell this to your face but they want you to they want you to f fail white watchers slimming world yeah. their business model is built upon obviously people succeeding to some extent but they're preying on the people's vulnerabilities of they're going to rebound they're going to have failure and they're going to go around again so i know for a fact i know chris very well he doesn't want that for his ladies he wants them to to reverse the tide uh i obviously we want that for the amputee community because I've gone out my way to create a community and a movement that I obviously call Chris out on it because mm -hmm. if you're going to have problems having asking these difficult questions to your ladies who haven't lost their leg the the legs haven't lost their limbs yet mm -hmm. I won't sure have problems with it because obviously it's it's not alien it's not and i'll bring people up to speed uh do you remember when i said this comment chris this would be about two years ago uh, mm -hmm. at richie's house i said shouldn't the cripple be next and i think people most people's jewels dropped to the face to the to the to the to the, to the floor and i think rich wanted me to take it back so i can't take it back it's funny in my in my in my in my world that's funny because it's because because he's uh so give people some context our coach is very old school he's, he's he's very women and children first and the, so i was like well technically the, the, the disabled person should be next off 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 this sinking ship uh and i think most people got oh james has got one hell of a dark sense of humor but for some people it'd be very uh challenging to be able to accept that because like well where did that come from yeah. but i'm okay with the disability so to be able to talk about most people who come to speak to me won't won't hide behind the leg as okay it might be an inconvenience or it might be a challenge for them to be able to take that that leap of faith to 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 to, to obviously take on board the challenge of losing the weight or to get to improve their fitness overall but i'm not afraid to ask well it's it's almost like it's it's a bs excuse as okay Give me the real reason or the objection that you have to mm -hmm. want to do this, and then we can obviously solve that. That wouldn't matter if you're disabled or not, because you're willing to ask that difficult question and almost take it off the table as, okay, we've we resolved this. Mm -hmm. What is the real reason that you are apprehensive to to start, to to continue, and to a certain extent go future into the future? Which obviously yeah. you, you, you and I, uh, well, you've got a massive community now of, was it three, yeah. three point something? <coughs> uh, 3,400. Yeah. So you've got a massive big groups. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that is the, by no small feat of, of, okay, you could say from a coaching perspective of, uh, if you looked at it, niching down on or, or niche uh, i don't like the american word of that because it's <laughs> niche, yeah. correct uh, <laughs> in, in uh, being a french word it would be niche uh, 
yeah. uh, all day long. Um, that's no offense, obviously, to the Americans, but obviously some people will say niche, some will say niche. Um, but even even for coaching, you'd see people say, uh, I don't know if you know Alex Povey at all. Mm -hmm. You'll say, you need to be yeah. broad, you need to be broad. So it's mm -hmm. like, well, if I'm broad, you don't really help. But it's, it's almost you could get bogged down uh, from a from a perspective because you see because yeah coaching level as well for for, for guys listening guys listening and what I'm watching you've got so much in, information bombarded at you probably less so than weight loss mm -hmm. uh, health in general I wouldn't want to guess if I would put how do I lose weight into into an internet search how many hits would come back probably billions yeah. um, you haven't got the time to be able to do that obviously for, for us as coaching we get bombarded with different things in terms of well you need to do it this way you need to do it that way yeah and i think the the, the, the more experience you gain, and it's obviously relatable to, to tell the fitness now you're yeah. able to decipher yeah what is bullshit and yeah, what is it going to move the needle as well. okay this is garbage mm. I, was, yeah. I don't need to listen to this information because it's so so I won't say flawed. It's it's it, 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 it sounds sexy because it's marketing and, and, and yeah. it's quite a <laughs> to people in my community. As once you get better to be able to understand um, around, I don't know what's the best one for us. Lose say twenty eight pound in twenty day twenty eight days. It's not really <laughs> not sustainable. It's not realistic. No, but no. it sounds amazing. Yeah. So yeah. obviously, people fall into that trap of because of all of that insecurity when it comes to I'm not gonna I don't really want to use the term failure, but when they've had not had success, they get yeah. easily suckered into the next big thing. Of it's, it's interesting from a psychological perspective for people's behaviors. Why why do people uh, they if you were to look at your behavior, I'm gonna use an example now. If you were to look at your behavior in a supermarket or a grocery store of anything that's got new on, to, new on it, you want to pick it up because it's like, yeah. oh, it's new. I don't need it, but I need to try it. If it's bad, obviously we won't buy it again. But it's yeah. it's almost oh, the psychology behind it is so fascinating because obviously these companies pump, pump millions, if not billions of dollars uh, or, or insert your currency into getting you hooked on a product yeah getting it in front of you getting it in front of you yeah absolutely yeah and i think you know what you said rewinding just a little bit you know earlier you said you know we prepare for these you know family occasions you know family occasions it could be you know any kind of a social occasion you know learning how to manage those is is really important for sure but also learning to accept that it's just one day no damage, you know, as long as you do it responsibly. One day is insignificant, isn't it, really, if you think about it? You know, if that one day is happening every four days, and obviously that's going to have quite a big impact on overall results. But birthdays, Christmas, you know, large events, does it really matter if you consume some more calories? Not really. It's more important that you enjoy the day than you go into it with this, you know, restrictive today. I'm going to eat 1,400 calories, even though it's my birthday. <laughs> yeah, it's just well, it's hard. more, it's more important to just enjoy the day. I don't, I don't know many cakes yeah. that would be <laughs> taste yeah. very yeah. nice yeah. and would be under that calorie count. Or you'd have to do it, as we mentioned before, to like prepare, and then you'd probably not eat anything, which is obviously not ideal I, either. Um, yeah either way as well to to go down that route yeah. um and it, it's the psychology of it. It, it it's almost you and i probably have done this in the past not from a nutrition mm -hmm. perspective but you know entrench ourselves into why isn't this working uh and and okay this is rich's philosophy in it and i've ingrained it into my business but looking at things from a 3,000 feet perspective as a bird's eye view, as it gives you a greater perspective long-term to kind mm -hmm. of go, okay, one day out of, we're August, so 31, not big deal. In the grand mm -hmm. scheme of things, I think people will mm -hmm. go, well, okay, the other 30 days, if they were 
I won't say bang on perfect, but near as close to mm-hmm. it. That one day is tiny in comparison. Like yeah, what, that, com- any mathematician out there, obviously you can work that out. I don't want to want to yeah. work out how much that is as a, as a percentage, but it, it's almost re-educating people to to, to challenge their behaviours and, and challenge their, yeah. their 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 overriding limiting beliefs as yeah, if you sure. were to have failures okay this is a lot easier to explain to an athlete because obviously you you you, bu- you build your entire sporting prowess on learning from mistake after mistake you've probably made thousands of mistakes but you don't analyze them to an eighth mm-hmm. degree and it's almost establishing that when obviously you and I are committed quite similar in, in that fact you've you've got you faced adversity yeah that's that's a failure in itself because it's hard mm-hmm. you you faced okay having diabetes type 2 diabetes you faced losing a limb mm-hmm. L- weight loss is probably i won't say easy but depending on your ladies are looking between 30 to 100 pound y- y- if you looked at it like that of you've already faced a hurdle that is probably very very difficult in itself already you should almost look at it with how would i describe this you want to soak it up you you're excited for the challenge um okay most people don't go into that (laughs) into that mentality it's very difficult to be obviously one side of the fence to the other because you would look at a, a new obstacle with alarm you would look at a new obstacle with interpretation fear because oh I've never faced this before, what could go wrong? I'm I'm starting to mm-hmm. catastrophize a little bit, but yeah. you you don't look at it uh, from from a kid's perspective. A kid's gonna go into a scenario of okay, what's the worst? What 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 could go wrong? Oh, let's do it anyway. If I'm gonna yeah. hurt myself, hey, it comes <laughs> with the territory, and yeah. it's almost reestablishing some of those beliefs that you had as a youngster, kind of go, well. If I'm in the moment, I enjoy the mo- the moment. I control the future, and it could go wrong. It could go right, and I'm I'm the judge to be that. Whereas if you stand still, you don't go anywhere, and mm-hmm. you contemplate, you know, if buts and maybes of what could go potentially. You could, you could you could be here for probably yeah. years, kind of Absolutely. going wrong. <laughs> this could go wrong, but yeah. then you're going backwards because the weight's gonna go up. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're going to get more um, immobile. Obviously, the weight's mm-hmm. going to go up even more. You're going to be even more yeah. uh, immobile, wheelchair, da, da, and obviously, it could really spiral out of control very, very quickly. So, it's almost having uh, the support of another person to kind of go, okay, it's going to be okay. It's going to be bumpy mm-hmm. because everything uh, worth doing is hard. Mm-hmm. But I'm there to support you. I'm going to hold your hand. I'm using your words now. <laughs> almost mm-hmm. verbatim <laughs> from a video that you did a, a couple of days ago. But it's almost reassuring the person that, hey, I, I, I've I've seen hundreds if not thousands of people go through the same journey. You're going to be okay. Yeah. And any, any, any roadblocks we face going forward, we face together. So if you've got mm-hmm. any, so the, the the communication is key. Of yeah, for if sure. You, if 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 you're struggling, you yeah. talk about it. If if yeah. you want to learn something more, you talk about it. If you yeah. want to know something uh, more complex, you ask. Yeah. Um, and obviously, it, it, it's 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 our job as coaches to take i won't say the brunt of it because that's not mm-hmm. fair but take some at least 50 percent of the load to kind of go yeah. or maybe more at the beginning to kind of go okay you're apprehensive down the line that you're gonna potentially fail again mm-hmm. let me take some of the loads i've been here before i've done it i've done it seen it been there done it, it, done yeah, it. got a t-shirt it. yeah and obviously i don't want you to fail I think you and I are very similar in, in terms of emotion, emo- emotively we carry our hearts on our sleeves. So we want mm-hmm. the, f- the fulfillment aspect of the person probably, yeah. I'm going to come out and say, 
more so. This is probably not great, yeah. but when you want it more than the other person, but when the person wants it just as much, it's, it's amazing because it's like, oh, okay, yeah. this person's going to succeed. I want them to succeed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because I want them to be able to talk good about themselves, talk about their success, mm-hmm. and obviously that's a, that's a referral in itself because it's like, oh, yeah. Chris, Chris, Chris is who you want to speak to. James yeah. is who you want yeah. to speak. So they almost they do the marketing for you, as yeah. if it, especially Facebook is amazing because then they tag you. Oh, okay, I'll speak to that yeah. person. Uh, yeah, literally, and, and see yeah. where they're at. Um, so it's 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 almost you're creating. I'm going to say community. I'm going to say something even worse. But in terms of you're creating <laughs> kind of this click yeah. of people that resonate with you as an individual. So you're not yeah. going to be able to please everybody. Um, not. I'm not going to mention this, but obviously somebody behind the scenes knows. Uh, you're going to get, obviously, the haters. Um, yeah. But people don't want you to succeed because yeah. in their world, they, they don't deem they can succeed themselves. Or they've had so much yeah. failure as... Oh, it's much easier to tear somebody down than to support yeah. them and yeah. obviously that's the world we live in now um but for for you you chris mm-hmm. you you mentioned obviously the, the empire of your business mm-hmm. tell my audience what some of your goals are so i'm talking about the document now i can't remember the name of the, you know, the document i'm talking about to the you mean daily, daily ritual one yeah so you know i want to be you know one of the most recognized you know group coaching program for for you know people with type 2 diabetes and at this stage it's not just going to be ladies um you know i want to help i want to help thousands of people you know lose reach their goal weight lower their a1c achieve remission and get off meds for life and what that essentially means to me you know if i can help if i can help a thousand ladies do that okay in the next decade in the next decade alone i can give back to the world ten thousand years yeah because you know even even more than that perhaps when i say that what i mean is you know the 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 energy you know the life and the expectancy of the people that i help is quite literally increased with these things that we're talking about, you know, 30 to hundred pounds lost, you know, type two diabetes and remission, you know, there've, there's been studies which have found that that already extends our lives by five to 10 years plus at a minimum. So if I can have a thousand people in the next decade, well, that's, you know, my, you know, it's 10,000 years given back to the world, which is like uncomprehendable in a way, but it's so possible. Yeah. It's so possible. So that's, that's my kind of mission. That's what I want to achieve. And so you got, know, it's not, got a few comments in in the in the feed because i got my phone next to me this is obviously we were talking about tech before that's the downside of this um obviously deborah thanks for your your comment about providing captions i'm not quite sure what you mean by that but thank you um nonetheless uh, i've got one question i've got two questions for you chris uh, how do you, this is from Kathy? So I spoke to Kathy earlier. How do you yeah. feel about fasting for people slash diabetics mm-hmm. with all this new info? New info about fasting and blood sugars. Yeah, so I I would say maybe three quarters of the ladies I coach uh, do some form of intermittent fasting. Yeah, maybe three quarters. Um, it's by far a magic pill. You know, it's a method. It's a tool that may help you. The only reason three quarters of the ladies I coach intermittent fast because the other quarter of the ladies, it doesn't suit. Okay. Now we all know intermittent fasting is just a simple name for, you know, skipping breakfast commonly, you know, sometimes there's other meals, but usually it's skipping breakfast. Obviously there's two main benefits of that. The first is because um, you're fasting for 16 hours. You're not eating anything. Your fat, your blood sugar or the blood glucose that you have in circulation is dropping into what should be a healthier range because you're not adding to it, you're not eating anything, which causes a lower average blood sugar. That's the first benefit. The second benefit is easier adherence to your dietary goals. Okay, So if I gave you 1,500 calories and 110 grams of carbs, 
if you spread those calories and carbs across a normal day, 15, 16 hours, okay, you're going to have to spread those calories and carbs quite thin. You know, three meals, you know, a couple of snacks. However, if I give you the same calories, 1,500, 110 grams of carbs, and say, right, two meals, one or two snacks, all of a sudden, when you do eat, you've got more calories and carbs to play with, which means you can be more flexible with the food that you do eat, which means you haven't got to eat diet foods. When I say that, what I really mean is, you know, vegetables, salad, you know, whole foods. Obviously, that wants to be the backbone of what we eat, but we don't want to just eat those foods. Let's be honest. Um, obviously, the people that it doesn't suit, it's more that when I say that, what I mean is uh, some people's, you know, ghrelin and leptin cycles, you know, spike in the morning. Some people physically can't skip breakfast without feeling really lousy. Okay, Some people can't probably not going to suit you if that's the case um some people's work schedule is all over the place or you know their schedule as a whole just doesn't suit this you know this this uh what's the word i'm looking for robust this is when you're going to eat this is when you're not so that's why not everyone does it because if it doesn't suit you and you try and do it you're not going to do it anyway <laughs> appreciate that chris uh, Arshel Brooks Harris has put Chris my A1C at one point was 14.9 mm-hmm. my doctor couldn't believe I was still basically living or mm-hmm. in a diabetic mm-hmm. coma my latest yeah. A1C is 8.5 nice. I still have work to do I know my yeah. triggers yeah. lean back on my faith in God to work for me also I can't eat the wrong I'm assuming thing because obviously it's missing the word uh, for for a long time because my body rejects it and I'm back on my healthy eating plan and intermittent fasting. Good. So let's good. Just, let's touch upon the eating the wrong thing there because obviously that's yeah. to you and I that skips that jumps out in terms of uh, yeah as a as a subject. So I'll let you obviously answer that. Yeah. So. The only, the only way I would ever use that as being the wrong thing is if that thing leads to you over-consuming calories and over-consuming carbs. Because you can, let's say you've got set calorie and carb goals. Those calories and carbs are essentially yours to spend however you want in moderation. As long as you adhere to those, you're going to be okay. And, and moderation is the key. Like I said earlier, if you're eating 75% of your calories and carbs in donuts, but still adhering to calories and carbs, obviously that's not going to be very productive or it's not going to elicit fat loss. You know, blood sugars probably aren't going to be very good, let's be honest. But as long as, you know, calories and carbs are met, there isn't really anything that you strictly cannot eat. Yeah. There are some foods, obviously, which are going to cause a slightly bigger increase in blood sugars. And at which point it comes to a case of, is it worth me eating it? If it's your favorite food, then it, let's be honest, it probably is worth eat, worth you eating that once a week. In order, but is it is it worth the high blood sugars? Probably is. If you compare that to a scenario where you do not allow yourself to eat this food and maybe some other foods, three weeks down the road, this is the hardest thing I've ever done. I can't do it anymore. You quit. Yeah, it's all too hard. All because you're being too restrictive on yourself. Yeah. So obviously, there's there's cons. You know, there's disadvantages to eating these foods which are high carb, high glycemic index. But there's also positives <laughs> to eating these too, and that's that you get to enjoy the process and you actually get to stick to it long enough to actually achieve your goals. So that's only the most important thing that you actually achieve. Yeah. Obviously, if you're eating 110 grams of carbs in, um, you know, whole fresh foods, vegetables versus 110 grams of carbs with some processed foods that starches that have got higher glycemic index, then yes, your blood sugars are going to be better with this whole food diet. They are. But at what cost? Are you going to be able to stick to that for the next 9, 12, 18 months? That's the question. Mm. Yeah. Thanks thanks for commenting and keep the questions do coming in. Uh obviously our shells put later on and I'll cover this one now. Uh that's what I do. Intermittent fasting, I'm back on it. My greatest go to when I snap out of my messing up. So obviously I'll cut co- I'll cover the messing up bit. 
this is probably more of a psychological thing now. Is it's more behavior in terms of uh, it, it's looking at the word itself of we just looked at the ma- mess up. It's almost viewing, as you mentioned, Christian, the the the, the wrong stuff as yeah. a negative. It's almost like um, I think it's Weight Watchers sins and yeah. foods. Yeah. It, it's it's almost looking at what you're doing as a as a negative it shows that we we've, we've done a lot of self development but you're looking at the outcome in 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 possibly the wrong way you're not accepting that you're human at the end of the day you're going to make mistakes you're going to make things that you're going to regret but it's almost coming to terms of obviously mindfulness talks about acceptance of you've done it you've you've got to almost embrace it as if we're we're on the topic of nutrition of today was a 10 out of 10 how how often can you make that sustainable every day is not it's not necessarily realistic you're almost like searching for perfection it's not possible you're not a robot and this term of messing up it, it, it almost does you a disservice of you you're almost viewing a, a particular day where it could be that you not had a great night's sleep you got work stress you got some sort of family issue going on that's going to impact obviously all aspects of your life not just your eating but f- for say for example in that scenario it's a five out of ten so you might view it as that day sh- I'm going to use French now. It's shit. It's not very good. It, 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 I messed up on my eating because of external factors that are contributing to making me making more physiological responses, which the body's going to do. It's going to want to get energy quickly so it can make these these decisions ra- rationally. Obviously, it's 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 a, it's not ideal, but you're going to make behaviors where you you resort to i'm going to use mo- emotional eating of of if you're angry you're sad you're stressed the first th- th- reaction i'm not saying thought i'm saying reaction that you do is going to go to eating so when obviously you you mentioned donuts it's going to be something that you later down the line slate yourself for oh why did i eat that tub of ice cream why did i eat the pack of the donuts why did i eat the whole chocolate bar it's so your body is able to obviously deal with that response it's 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 doing almost going back to what is hardwired to do as a response oh the body normally does this so that's almost as a defensive mechanism it makes us feel better in an instant but lousy in the long term but we're going to do it anyway so it's almost reprogramming yourself in your thought process of not viewing things as messing up or going wrong but looking looking at it is did i go one day off script did i go four days off script did it become all freaking week is it now a month obviously we're, we're obviously going in a more dramatic fashion but what we mentioned before and the one day in the grand scheme of a month is no big deal i wouldn't even use the term mess up it'd be did i enjoy myself on that day yeah yeah Yeah. i like that yeah of course so it's almost so it's almost looking at more of of a of a psychological aspect of okay why do you deem it to be messing up why why how we're gonna go deep it's more like a coaching call but that aspect of you're looking at the whys as well where where is the trigger point for you using that sort of language so it's almost allowing yourself to have a greater understanding of okay if i'm resorting to 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 go to the cookie jar or the biscuit tin what is it that's that's triggering me to do that in the first place am i dehydrated uh am i running on fumes because of work and and obviously we we are human beings we don't think about this thing of uh 
what was I watching the other day? I watched something on social media about homework. Uh, and the, 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 the person on his TikTok was a coach. So he's saying the son bringing homework back is like, what? why are we bringing stuff from school back to do at work, uh, to do at home? And obviously the, the mother and father is bringing their work life home and then people don't actually uh, have a meaningful r- relationship because they're still on freaking tr- 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 I need to get the I need to get this email done I need to get this whereas uh, we're almost conditioned from school to look at things that oh, I need to always be on the go I need to always be working I need to always be progressing and it's almost taking that step back uh, and reflecting that I'm going to use to not overanalyze because if you if you're a perfectionist or uh i'm a very big thinker you can overanalyze things things and get obsessed but it's looking at the impact it's having towards how you view things so if you're viewing things as as Ash, and i appreciate you'll be you, you you talking about this of messing up it's almost looking at where did that come from is it something that i've created is it something I'm going to use you as the example now, Chris? Is it something Chris is in, in, in inhibited into me by how he talks? And I, I've almost I'm going to use like the parental one now. He's almost it's it's almost done it for osmosis of I'm copying Chris because that's the way that people do it. Um, and obviously, I might not align with his beliefs. And this is obviously the inner turmoil that people face as. If you do something stupid, and I'm aware of it, I'm going to call it out. Whereas this is where we don't do ourselves as we do. I'm not saying stupid is probably not the right word. We do things that we don't wish we did, be it mm-hmm. making uh, the the wrong choice. I'm going to use figuratively the wrong. Whereas if you change the language, you would be able to accept it a little bit more because it's 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 somewhat in accordance with your your beliefs and obviously you and i know this we can shift it you can change your beliefs it just it just takes uh building upon it and then obviously dispelling the other one but this takes time and it and it is almost having that willingness to i said homework to to be able to work on yourself to be able to maximize this because this is going to happen incrementally, gradually, but you don't see it. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, for sure. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You know, I think to piggyback, to piggy on the back of what you know I was talking about earlier. You know, there's no such thing as you know good and bad foods. You know, if you label foods this way, you're only reinforcing a negative relationship with food. There's more nutritious and there's less nutritious foods. The reality is you can eat a combination of the both and still get very good results in terms of weight loss, reductions in A1C, etc. But as soon as you start labeling foods as bad, any foods, and as soon as you eat it, guilt's going to ensue, you're going to beat yourself up. What did I do that for? I failed, I've ruined everything. And it's in reality all for nothing because there's no such thing. You really can eat those less nutritious foods. In moderation, of course. Well, it, it, yeah. we, we're talking about companies that got billion dollar budgets, so you're gonna see they pulled this advert from the UK because um, I always criticise it. Weight Watchers one, um, uh, you know the the big lady from Birmingham that's on um, Loose yeah. Women. Oh yes, yeah, they yeah. Always yeah. laugh yeah. and always. Yeah. She lost what was it in the end? I think it was about a stone and a half. On Weight mm-hmm. Watchers in a month, for you and I, that's not a result. No, because she's the. No. De- I'll, 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 if I remember, I'll put it in the comments so people can obviously see and and see what we're talking about. But she probably could lose, or lose, could have lose, could have lost, probably sub- substantial a lot more, but people fixate on the number. Oh, yeah. she lost a stone and a half. So it's, let's get the math right: twenty eight pounds and a bit. Mm-hmm. in a month yes good result but for her it's not mm-hmm. she could she probably could have sustained that longer over a longer time maybe lost double that 
mm-hmm. and then that yeah. will have more implications on her well-being uh, yeah. i'm not slating her as a person because that's not fair but in terms of this is where marketing is a little bit i want to use a really rude word now but it's naughty <laughs> it's, it's very manipulative yeah. In terms very, yeah. of it, it, it fixates on people's insecurities, then they obviously yeah. buy it. So yeah. we mentioned obviously Weight Watchers and Slimming World at the very beginning of they they almost operate on people coming back. It doesn't matter yeah. if it's yeah. six months down the line, <laughs> yeah. a year, yeah. two years, and you're thinking, people, what are you doing? Because it's not yeah. work. It's obviously not working. Yeah, you even if going back, even if you lose the weight following a certain approach and then regain it after doesn't mean that approach was successful just because you lost it in the first place. Well, I think the best one I've seen, and I know Gary quite well, is Gary Mendoza, and I've had him on the podcast, uh, is a, he's obviously been a PT like ourselves, gone into coaching, and also now coaches coaches, and he, his bang, and obviously I'll, 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 I'll link that podcast in the, in, in, I must call it show notes in the comments. I was thinking a different way now. Uh, his bang is maintenance, 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 maintenance. But obviously, if you were to go to weight loss, it does not talk about maintenance. It talk about you want to lose X amount of pounds and this and that. But mm-hmm. if people go to maintenance, I don't think the industry would, would fall on its knees, but it'd probably come close because the yeah. people maintaining it uh, were living um, healthy lifestyles it'd have to evolve to to something else um and okay uh when it comes to you know supplementation because i was talking to a this is you know germans they like they like numbers and things like he was like well why don't you like supplementation i got nothing wrong with supplementation and and how much money is in involved in the industry but it doesn't give me the buzz like behavior habits psychology yeah. and, and why people have got from a to b yeah because nutrition at the end of the day the science behind it is it is interesting yeah. but it's not fascinating for some people if they wanted to know about it, 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 it it's interesting because it's it, how it applies to to the gen, the the i won't say general public to the only person it is interesting but I think the psychology of why people do things is, is a lot more fascinating because it's interesting yeah. of why people can almost support their argument as I do A, B, C, D, D, uh, A, B, C, D, A, B, C because of X, Y, Z. Yeah. Okay, have you just heard what you've said? That makes no sense. Yeah. <laughs> because it's, I think when people are able to talk it out loud and, and to be able to hear themselves say, why well, do this? because of that and then they almost kind of disqualify it themselves it, it, it's kind of breathtaking because it's like okay yeah. there's you've got the awareness of you're doing this you don't align with it and obviously what do you want to do about it yeah. so i think the, the 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 obviously mindset industry in itself is is i think tony robbins and things were talking about self-development yeah. but like three dollar yeah. three trillion dollar industry and it's only yeah. going to go up so if people yeah, are willing to learn it's only going to go uh, Excel from that. Yeah, yeah. So cool. I will read a few comments and then I'll okay, honestly end with, with, with you to finish, Chris. Uh, our shells put, correct, James, psych- psychological. I understand now that I'm an emotional eater after being in denial of being one for so long. I think I think that's quite harsh on the, on, on our, yourself, our show, because I think everybody's an emotional eater in one one thing away shape or form uh yeah. you and i probably would do yeah. uh we wouldn't regret it but we would know that we're okay we're going towards uh, I'll, I'll obviously throw myself under the bus here now um if for whatever reason things didn't go well in a particular month i might obviously want i back on my house backs on the uh, aldi so i'm not very far from a supermarket so i can make um some negative choices quite easily because it's in walking distance and it's only about five minutes away whereas i've taken more a conscious awareness to kind of go well you don't need to go in the first place you don't need to go to the store you don't need yeah. anything it's not necessarily like you need to have the bare necessities of 
um, some sort of protein, veg, fruit. Yeah. You don't need to go. It's it's, it's you you're gonna you're gonna make um, not bad choices, but your body's gonna f- feel it a couple of days later, a month, a week down the line. Kind of go, well, why did you make that decision? That's why I'm in. I've got information. I've got. I'm aching. I'm because I've made more choices towards. I'm not gonna say bad food. I'm gonna say processed food now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So obviously I'm aware to kind of go. No, nope, you don't need to go. Yeah. Might want yeah. to to be able to social aspect of maybe speak to people in the shop. That'd be about it. Yeah. I could do that anyway. Um. So so I think the the aspect of the emotional eater is maybe living, giving yourself a little bit of an allowance, a little bit to kind of go. It's all right to be yeah. emotional eater. But that's not you as a person. It's just yeah. a, it's a label. Yeah, yeah. To distinguish between the two. Yeah, labeling yourself an emotional eater already gives yourself permission to almost be that in a way. Um, you know, we you're human. We all need. You know, food for all of us can be a little bit of a a crutch for when we're feeling emotional or stressed. Um, and that's part of being human. The problem is when food is your only way of dealing with that stress and emotion. I think it's when it gets problematic. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, our shows put you guys are the best. I truly appreciate your honesty and support. That's a massive capital letter. So that's almost like shouting that. Yeah. Uh, it narrows down to how long you keep eating for me. I'm back on track again, but I realize my true trigger. I have to go some... Uh, obsession shoot, shoots mirrors. God bless you you both. So, obviously, we're coming to the close of this live stream, Chris. Mm-hmm. I'm going to link the group, your group in the comments anyway. But if people wanted to get in touch with you and reach out, mm-hmm. how would they do so? Just on Facebook, to be honest, that would be the, the best way, yeah, I, I think. Um, you, I'll, I'll be tagged in this as well, won't I? So, obviously, all of that information is going to be there. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. What would be your... I'm going to use my podcast now as the ending um, uh, to sign off on. If you have to summarize what we've been speaking about into one sentence to take a, for people... I can't get it right. <laughs> If if you had to summarize what we've been speaking about today into one sentence for people to take away, what would that be? Sustainable, slow progress is far more important than quick, radical change. So once again, Chris, it's been my absolute pleasure to have you inside the group. Thank you very much for having me, man. It's my pleasure. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure.